All right, welcome. I'm Karitha Yeager. Welcome to Sovereign and Strong, How to See Beauty in Chaos, Shift Your Consciousness, and Create Peace Within. I'm so glad you've joined us. Today's guest speaker is the lovely Mary O'Malley. Mm -hmm. Mary is an author, a teacher, a counselor, and awakens others to the joy of being fully alive. Her transformative approach, being with life, no matter what happens, mm -hmm. <laughs> offers a way to replace struggle with ease and joy, which is a perfect and timely topic right now. Thank you so much for being here with us, Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are welcome. Glad that we're exploring together. Yes, yes, and it's so nice to chat with you again. I think your wisdom and your counsel of what you've been speaking about for years mm -hmm. is more potent than ever right now with these right now. Mm -hmm. that are unfolding mm -hmm. each and every day. And mm -hmm. it's it's truly a great awakening happening. And you've been talking about awakening for years. And um, for some viewers, the term awakening might be kind of newer to them. So I would love it if you could share with us what it means to you. Oh my goodness. I think the Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest version of it is the title of my latest book, What's in the Way is the Way. You know, I joke with people, you don't even need to read the book. Just live that title. We live in a dualistic mind that thinks this is good, that is bad, this is right, that is wrong. And it believes when we get it all together, then finally everything will be unending orgasmic bliss. You know? And that's just not the way of it. You know, you look at the world that we've shown up in and it's a dualistic world there's hot there's cold there's day there's night there's winter there's summer there's male there's female every single atom that makes up every single thing has a positive and negative charge and what we haven't understood is that trying to always get to the so-called good stuff and leave the so-called bad stuff behind, all it's done is kept us caught in struggle. And so life is, uh, uh, my mentor would say, may you be so lucky to come across something you can't control. You know, and most people would say, oh, no, no, no. But you know, life is really uncontrollable. That's a whole nother conversation. But, what that's basically saying and what the title what's in the way is the way is saying is that maybe just maybe half of life which is the difficult half is where the treasures are that what more and more of us are learning how to do is to appreciate the easy times but not hold on to them but not resist the difficult times, not push them away. Because in my experience, there's always treasures in the difficult time. So here we are in the whole world. I mean, it's, it's you know, whether it's a pandemic or whether it's Black Lives Matter. I mean, believe you me, discrimination doesn't just happen in the United States. You know, it has happened in the, collective human mind for the whole time we've been around you know it, it created the caste system in india it created the class system in in uh great britain it 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 is allowed uh men to say that women can have the vote you know it's allowed churches to to you know have power over the masses because we know better than you do you know, there is this whole sense of discrimination inside of the human collective mind. And I think we're being asked to grow up. And oftentimes great growth happens when you are deeply challenged. And so here is a time where there is uh, great anger, uh, you know, especially around Black Lives Matter and the, you know, just the, the seeing of how people of color have been so discounted and so uh, disempowered and so uh, controlled. I mean, control is a mild word, you know, uh, down through the eons. 
but also the fear with COVID-19. Just maybe those two qualities of this dualistic mind, life is asking us at this time, don't fall into the story of fear. Don't fall into the story of judgment and hatred. You know, they're still having all these, um, um, you know, uh, violent protests down in Portland, Oregon. Uh, you know, when President Trump has sent in federal officers, which is only putting gasoline on the, on the flame. We who are on the outside of that, we have an invitation to not fall into taking sides, to not fall into anger, to not fall into fear, to use them to get to know how our conditioned mind talks inside of us so that we may be a place that responds to the world rather than reacts. So to me, what's in the way is the way. This is the way right now. This, these great challenges, the economic challenges, let alone the, the illness challenges, let alone the discrimination challenges, maybe they're just here, not because we've done something wrong or God has fallen asleep in the job. Oh, we're paying our karmic retribution. Maybe, just maybe, life is saying, become smarter than your dualistic mind and learn how to show up for the process. People that do become a healing presence in the world. Oh, I, love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is so powerful because it feels like there, with everything, every new thing that's been coming up, it's just a mirror and it's giving us. Um, oops, sorry, it's giving us an opportunity to take a deeper look at ourselves. And for exactly. those emotions to bubble up for healing. Yeah, yeah. And to take responsibility. But we really misinterpret the word responsibility. It is the ability to respond. You know, it is the ability to do what I talk about in the in what's in the way is the way to do the U-turn. I, I, I describe one of the most powerful ways that you can become a conscious human being is in your relationships. You know, those, those, that mate that, that started as the love of your life, you know, and now you find they are sleeping with somebody else or they, uh, you know, burp out in public or, you know, they are not what you thought they would be. They were going to be something that completed you. Well, that means that they have to be a particular way, you know, and all of a sudden they aren't. And oh my God, the feelings we have for them. Oh my God. But if you do the while you turn, the you turn, when you begin to realize when you're focusing on somebody else, whether it's a politician you don't like, or whether it's your friend or family member or mate you don't like, when you begin to have responsibility, you do the U turn and you say, What am I ready to see inside of me? What am I ready to unhook from? The wonderful thing is that you are no longer a victim to your life. It is no longer happening to you. It is happening for you. God, as far as I can see, it's the only way to live. But we have been trained to focus out there, to, to get this idea of what we should be and you know, try to make ourselves be that and then be you know, judgmental or despairing when it doesn't happen. And we get ideas of what they should be, whether it's our boss or our coworker or our mate or our dog for him, or our child. You know. And over and over again, we learn how to bring the attention back and have the courage to really look. I talk, call it look to unhook, to really look at, okay, what is this bringing up inside of me right now? And slowly and surely, it's a little bit like putting together a 10,000 piece picture puzzle, you know, that, you know, you look at it and you go, God, I can't even, you know, I mean, I may have a few, few of the edge pieces done, but, my, you know, and, and with our lives, we don't even get the picture on the front of the box, you know, and we're putting together these pictures. But slowly and surely, you begin to be able to see, oh, that's a cloud. Oh, that's a tree. Oh, that's a dog. But slowly and surely, the more you do this while you turn, 
the more you take responsibility, the ability to respond to what you are experiencing, the more you flesh out the picture puzzle of this conditioned mind that has run us our whole lives. People are listening to this today because they don't have to be run by the conditioned mind anymore. How do you not be run by it? Not by trying to stop it, not by trying to fix it, rise above it, get rid of it, or even understand it. Although sometimes that helps a bit. It's getting to know it. Oh, three cheers for pandemics and difficult family members and whatever. <laughs> Right. The challenge is, is really interesting right now because with what's been going on and going back to what you were saying about looking outward for how to function, there's been a significant drop in the amount of entertainment that we can entangle our attention in with what's going on with sports and movies and things like that not being as pre prevalent as they typically are during mm -hmm. this season. Yeah. Um, it's been a great time for people to get to know themselves again. Yeah. Or go crazy. Or One go, or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't have this understanding that your life is for you, you know, I may have mentioned the last time we talked, but I love this quote from Eckhart Tolle, who wrote the New York Times bestseller books, The, the Power of Now and The New Earth. And he said, and, and I may not get these words exactly right, but it's pretty close to it. Life will give you the exact set of experiences you need in order to become a conscious human being. How do we know they're the right set? Because you're having them. And so you, you just, you're becoming a conscious human beings, being means that you are here for life. But it also means you're no longer run by your conditioning. That's how you can be here for life. And mm -hmm. life when you begin to realize that your life is for you that it's a i wrote this all in one fell swoop as i was writing what's in the way life is set up to bring up what has been bound up so it can open up to be freed up so you can show up for life what would it be like for all of you that are listening today that you just begin to get a little bit of that glimmer that maybe just maybe your life is this amazing adventure that is giving you the exact set of experiences you need and i love to say that people that hear this message for the rest of their life you're only going to have one of two experiences the first is life is inviting you just to be here, to fully, intimately be here with life the moment it appears out of mystery. We knew that when we were little. Most people left that a long time ago. Or life is giving you an experience to show you what you took on when you were growing up that has kept you cut off from that nourishment. Oh my God, to live your life in that way, to trust, it's not likable a lot of the time, but it is trustable. That's a powerful, that's a powerful lesson to learn. And I think a lot of people are learning it right now. Exactly. Choosing. They're pushed to learning it. Yeah. Most of us don't, we, we just want to stay here. We say we want to live in the now, but we want to live in the now in how the mind wants to. Oh, I want to have unending bliss, you know. But living in the now is being open to life, to 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows. And how you come back to life is by getting to know this. And it's, it's a little bit like this. Whoop, whoop. This is all the conditioning. Yeah, whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, oh, oop. Yeah, oh. Oh, that's fear talking. Oh, no, no, don't want to look at that. Oh, oh, that's how anger talks. Oh, I shouldn't be angry. Oh, no, no, I'm fascinated by it. Oh, there's despair. Oh, there's irritation. Oh, there's I'm not enough. Oh, I should be different than what I... And slowly and surely, these go to the wayside and you begin to engage with life as it is. Mm -hmm.
Or as Eckhart said, always say yes to whatever is happening in your life. It will miraculously change. Oh, no, wait. Always say yes. What could be more insane than to resist what already is? That's powerful. Yeah. And yet that's what this, the storyteller in our head does. That's its game. Mm -hmm. We are becoming smarter than that so that we can come back to life and that's what we, we we think we want the our soul made or a uh, size two body or a lamborghini or a uh, house on the lake no no what we want is what we imagine those things will bring to us which they don't maybe briefly what we want is this intimate alive connection with life trust-filled connection with life. In one of your videos, you've talked about your heart and that the heart is all about connecting and inclusion mm. versus being in the brain, which is controlling and exclusive. Ex exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. And that goes back to what you were talking about, the duality that we are seeing in the world and yeah. the duality that comes up for us to choose. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 for all of us, I mean, science has now shown our main brain is our heart. Our main brain is our heart, and it literally is a heart. In some writing somewhere, I have written all the, the uh, you know, it has neural synapses, and it creates, you know, dopamine, you know, all this. It literally is a heart. Science has now shown it's our main, our main brain. And for all of us, we had to put an armory around our heart. We were so roughly handled. Even if you weren't abused when you were young, you were roughly handled. And so we tightened our body, we held our breath, we put an armory around our heart, and we ran away to our mind. And we wonder why we're feeling empty. We wonder why we're always searching for something else out there in what we're really searching for is to come home with our heart. It's like the little prince says, it's with the heart that one sees rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye, or what he's talking about, the mind. And so I'm not knocking the brain, the head brain. It's a wonderful tool for maneuvering through reality. But when we think that's all we are, it's a prison and it's a horrible master. One of my friends has said that she believes that the furthest, um, the furthest places that she can travel to are between her heart and her brain. Yeah. And this is the longest yeah. pathway yeah. to meet yourself. Yep. 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 And it's the work of a lifetime, but people are listening today because they are on that journey. And one of the things I just, I'm almost finishing, I'm going to finish tomorrow a blog that the greatest gift, if you want to make a difference in the world right now, I mean, should I go out and march? You know, should I go and, and, and you know, volunteer at a hospital? Should I make lots of masks? You know, uh, you know should I read lots of books on, on, on you know, inherent racism? Uh, yeah, do all that if it calls to you. But if you want to make a difference, Ask life to show you how to fall in love with you. This is the piece of the planet that you have been given to fall in love with. And oh my God, I can't tell you how many people have told me it's so much easier to love other people or to even be nice to other people than it is to ourselves. But this is the task that we have been given. And how do you do that? First of all, by seeing all the armoring around your heart. And I am here to tell you, I almost died of shame. You know, I, there was a time in my life where I tried to kill myself three times. And the last time I was slitting my wrist and I was in the, a windowless bedroom in a basement apartment, such a great metaphor, you know, and I wasn't bleeding enough. And all I could remember is these just waves of self-hate that I was even a failure at suicide. Now, shame has no voice. Well, every once in a while, it will 
it will come. But I just say hi. I've gotten to know how shame talks inside of me. And the more you listen to shame or fear or anger or loneliness or sadness or even despair, the more you begin to get space from it. And shame can arise, but I don't get seduced into its world, even though it almost killed me. So I am a living example that you can take on that much shame. And when you get to know it, you can actually unhook from its world. Shame is the glue of the armoring around your heart. And so if uh, your listeners are interested in my first book, Belonging to Life, I wrote a chapter called Disarming the Judger, because that was the time that I had just come out of this judging voice that said it was absolutely true. Uh, it could prove that I was a failure and ugly and stupid and selfish. Those were its favorite things. Uh, inept, you know, and, uh, and if they want to email Deborah and then they, she can send them that chapter uh, if they're not interested in getting the book because it, it really came from this ability to begin to see shame rather than fall into its world. I know it's very, very seductive. But my experience is that as I got to know how shame talked inside of me, I discovered that every single thing it believed about me, the exact opposite was true. Huh. That's what I mean, that in the most greatest challenges of our lives always come embedded the greatest gifts. Yeah, I think that's wonderful information and advice for anybody who is feeling really intense emotions right now, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they, they have the, the possibility of holding the opposite within them. Exactly. And it takes being, it takes going towards, and we have been taught, I mean, I gained 97 pounds in a year once because I was trying to get away from, because I didn't know how to be with my anger and my terror, terror. Oh, I lived in dread. You know, I didn't know how to be with my loneliness, uh, uh, my despair, helpless, hopeless despair. And so I took every, I, I washed all that food down with alcohol. I took every drug I could get my hands on to try to get away. And I am here to say that the safest journey you'll ever do is the journey back is the journey towards if all you can do when I first started meditating I couldn't even close my eyes it was too intimate you know I had to just notice colors and and and, and shadow and light to just ground myself in this moment before my mind would take me over again then I was able to close my eyes and listen to sounds so powerful to actually make contact with life and then to watch how my attention will go back up into struggle again and then come and make contact again. The more I did that, the more I could begin to notice my breath. And when I noticed my breath, I could begin to come home to my body again. And as I came home to my body, I came home to my heart. So I say to the people that are listening, be gentle don't don't the, the the in my book the gift of our compulsions when i self published before the publisher picked it up i put the tortoise and the hare three times in that self published book because it ain't the hare that's running around trying to get things accomplished and i got to understand this and i got to do my module i got to think positive affirmations and then i'll finally be okay it's the hare he never gets to the finish line it's the tortoise that plods along. And so know that I know that because you are hearing these words, you are on the journey back to yourself, back to an alive, intimate, trust-filled connection with yourself and with life. And you're right where you need to be. And know that the fastest way home is to go slow. The heart doesn't force anything. I love that. I love that. Yes, you are so right. Go slow and stay in your heart. It does not force 
and it will not steer you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Life wants you to wake up. That's why Eckhart says it. it will give you the exact set of experiences you need in order to become a conscious human being. Nuggets of gold, Mary, as usual. Yeah, it's always a joy to talk to you, my friend. Always a joy. And before we end today, Mary has a gift for you all. It's a special price on one of her amazing courses oh. coming up soon. Did you want to tell us a little bit about it? Oh, yes. It, it, I have two online courses. And this fall, I think starting in September, third week in September, The Gift of Our Compulsions, which is based on my book, The Gift of Our Compulsions. Uh, the, uh, the title of that book before the publisher picked it up was Healing and Being Healed by our compulsions. I, I love that title. The gift of our compulsions kind of gets to it, but not healing and being healed by our compulsions. And in that book and in the course, it's the understanding that our core compulsion is to struggle. Mm -hmm. And all the other compulsions are an attempt to numb out from that struggle. And so it, the course is really about how to become smarter than struggle, but how also not to struggle with your compulsions because the st statistics show that as soon as you struggle with your compulsions, they have you, or if you control one, another one takes over. So there's a whole new way of being with compulsions and turning them from something that is wrong with you to a teacher and a guide back mm -hmm. into a wonderful, heartfelt connection with yourself and with life. And I think we're offering $200 off of that. So. That's perfect. Perfect timing. Yes, in this time of struggle, absolutely. <laughs> well, Mary, thank you so much for sharing your time and your voice and your wisdom with us here. Again, I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And thank you to the audience. Don't forget to click on the link to take advantage of Mary's gift and hit reply to this email and let me know what resonates with you the most today from our interview. Mm. Mm -hmm. And of course, stay tuned for more interviews coming up your way to help you all be sovereign and strong.